All right, so here is a project that I did for my band. The band's called Infamous Quick. The song is called Lemon Haze. And I'm going to show you basically how I build projects. Um, I always start with uh, drums, and I use a superior drummer in almost every project I do. And I use this Metal Machine Easy X. <clears throat> and I use um, their reverb and uh, their mixer and stuff like that uh, right in the plug-in rather than doing a whole lot here in the uh, child tracks. I did gate the toms here because they have a ring uh, that drones on after the tom is hit. But for the most part, I don't add reverbs and things here. I do it right in the plug-in because why not? They're there, and it sounds fine. Um, guitars for my bass, I really, really like this Element bass. Um, this is the best bass-sounding plug-in I've ever come across, and I'm using it in every project now. Um, for guitars, here I'm using the free Ignite Amps Emissary with the awesome Cabinetron IR loader. Comes with hundreds of IRs. You can load, what is this, uh, two, four, six, you can load eight of them and mix them over here. And it even has a, uh, e EQ match you can import say a guitar tone that you like and you can mix that with your IRs so I'm a I'm a plug-in guy I guess and I'm using our TB reverb that comes with Mixcraft and the TB gate uh, down here on this guitar I'm using bias effects 2 with the fab filter pro G gate I don't know why I don't just use the same one on both tracks but I didn't um, for the solo, what do I got going here? Oh, I used a Cherry Audio uh, Rack Mode Phaser. And I see I've yet to put an amp on this, because the amp I was using, my license expired, so I had to replace these with something else. Um, my vocal chain looks like that. Compression. Compression, compression, compression is your friend on everything. Uh, Pro-Q, awesome equalizer. de which showed up on my other screen. Uh, Reverb, which also showed up on my other screen. I love this little delay plug-in uh, from Nembrini Audio. It's got a sync, and it just works perfectly for me and then this one I love as well wider gives you a stereo wideness over anything you put it on and it works great for vocals so let's hear what this project sounds like with none of these plugins on okay doesn't sound good, right? Well, let's start with uh, compressing the drum uh, track here. This brings everything up to a to a level, and then we will enable everything on the bass and show you the tone on that. Yeah, distorted tone. That's uh, that's the modern bass tone. And we'll enable everything else. Vocal chain. Everything on the subtracks. I always have a submix track with a bunch of vocal tracks under it. As you can see here, we've recorded some vocals here. This is probably, oh, this is some, uh, so now let's
let's have a listen to it. I'm not going to turn on the mastering plugins yet. To a Okay. Sounds pretty good now, but it does sound uh, scattered and not pulled together. That's where our mastering plugins come in. The uh, multi band compressor is kind of a must have on your master. It just pumps the crap out of the, the whole mix without, uh, without letting it clip, really. And then for this project, I also let uh, Ozone 10 or Ozone 11 do its AI trickery and tell me what it thought was the, the better mix. So we let it do that. And then finally, <clears throat> another one of my very favorite plugins here, Flatline 2. It's a clipper. You can set your ceiling here, which says, do not let the audio go past this point. And then you pull the threshold down to pump the audio up. So what you're doing is pulling up everything that may not have been loud enough in the mix while setting a ceiling and not letting everything else go over that ceiling. So you're pulling it all together. It's kind of like glue. And with those three enabled, have a listen to it. <laughs> to a chorus here. about it um i i put markers at every point choruses solos verses etc so you can go over here and show the marker list and play from any marker and it just visually helps you know where you're at especially if you're zoomed in working on something like this um and i will let you know that as far as the mixer goes I like to use this more comprehensive uh, parametric and uh, for MIDI for the drums, well, let's bring that back over here, I build all of my drum tracks by hand. I don't drag in grooves from superior drummer or import MIDI files from somebody else. I create them myself. Um, it helps that I can play drums, so I'm not creating anything that would take a three-handed drummer to pull off. It's all actually playable. Um, I record all my own guitars, bass, solos. Uh, the singer, his name is Dan, and he is the singer for my band. We record him. Uh, one of these is me. I guess it's this one, since it says Eric over here. Um, and this technique, though, it'll work for you even if you don't play instruments. If you're just dragging in loops or remixing or whatever it is you electronic music people do, you can still use these same techniques, especially the mastering. So I hope this helps. <laughs>